Hey guys, Automotive Garage back today. We got a quick video showing you how easy it is to replace a water pump on this 2009 Ford Expedition. This should apply for 07 through, uh, what would that be? 10, I think, Expeditions with the five fours in them. Let me show you what we got here. Uh, it would have been just leaking when you park it. Uh, the customer never noticed anything dripping uh, when it was being driven, only when it was sitting. We sat here, ran it for a while, uh, let it idle in here a good bit, and during the course of that, it started leaking worse and showed us much easier where it was coming from. So let's take a look here. Underneath the front of the car here, you can see we have coolant right here on the rack. It just dripped as then, matter of fact. And if you look right there at the front of the oil pan is where it's dripping down from. So this is one of those situations where for a change, you can say, oh, wow, well, that makes sense. They should do that on every vehicle. Cause look, oh, there's a fan shroud in the way. But if you take a push pin out here and a push pin out right here, this thing flips right up and then it locks. I can do it with one hand. So anyways, that thing locks up like this and look how much access you have here. And then you can take your light. And once this got hot, it was harder to see Let's see if I can't get y'all a good shot of it. But if you look, it's almost too bright. If you look right inside the harmonic balancer over on this side, when it's cool, you can see the strain coming down. Once it got hot, it evaporated right off of that front cover. And uh, it was actually getting on the harmonic balancer and then slinging down here. And of course it would drip off the bottom, but it was spinning around so you weren't seeing it on the front cover. And it was only dripping right here at the front of the oil pan and onto the rack and onto the ground. So now we're gonna show you all the procedure for going through this whole thing and throwing a water pump on here. And uh, it's actually pretty easy. All right, so the first thing we wanna to do to start this job is we wanna drain our coolant. You see the red screw, thumb screw up there, that's your drain. I have a hose on it coming down here. We're gonna catch it in a clean pan and dispose of it properly. So we're gonna drain our system and then we'll start pulling stuff apart. All right, so once you have this raised up, you don't necessarily have to remove this fan blade, but it's gonna make the next step that much easier. So you got four 10 millimeter bolts that hold this whole fan blade assembly to the clutch. Pull those out. I already got two of them out here. That's what they look like. Pull those out and we'll pull our fan blade off and then we'll have easier access for unplugging this clutch, undoing our clutch from the uh, water pump neck. All right, we got them all undone. Take your fan, pull it off. You gotta work around this hose right here. I might not be able to do this with just one hand. It's gonna be a little bit of a tight fit, but it comes up. Now that we got our fan off of our fan clutch, we gotta undo our wires to our electronic fan clutch here. You have this clip right here, it clips around this. You undo that. You have the red release tab right here. So if you look right there, you have that push tab out there towards the red locking tab. You push that in, you pull the connector off. All right, so the best way I like to approach this is I don't use fan clutch tools on fan clutches. I use an air hammer. It's much easier, it's less of a fight, and it usually breaks it right loose, not a big deal. So I'll show y'all. Uh, this is my cheap air hammer. I use it because it's a little bit smaller to get in tight spots. Use the chisel attachment. It tears the clutch up the least amount, and uh, I'll show y'all how we bust it loose. All right, we're gonna bust all four of these just loose right now before we take our belt loose. Now we're gonna undo our tensioner right here, take our belt off, and then we'll finish removing those bolts, then we'll be down to the water pump. All right, so now we're going to bust our four bolts and if you notice that pulley has brought a little groove on each one of the heads of these bolts I've never seen that on one of these it doesn't seem to have damaged the pulley but I don't know why unless that it didn't feel like it had an awful lot of play in it but you can see where it was starting or where it was weeping out of the weep hole there 
and you can see this bottom bolt has got some corrosion funk on it here. So let's get this busted off, take a better look at it. You don't get all the coolant out of here when you drain it. So when you bust this off, you're gonna kind of make a mess. So I'm gonna get a catch pan and try to catch what I can. So we got our water pump out. Here's the new, there's the old. You see the blades have chewed on the inside there. The block looks fine, but if you look at this bearing spacing, that's up tight. And this one has a gap. So there's our failure point. All right, we cleaned all this up. Got our new water pump. We lubricated our O-ring just a little bit with a tiny bit of assembly grease here, just so it'll slide in easy. So get your pump in here. Just barely put it in there and get you a bolt starter because you don't want to be wiggling that O-ring all around. That's a good way to mess your O-ring up. So get to your bolt started. Now with two of your bolts in, it'll guide you in. Just push, you heard it block. I'm sorry my camera moved. Get all your bolts started. You're gonna tighten them up in a cross pattern. I gotta look in the book real quick. I'm pretty sure it's 18 foot pounds, but I wanna make sure. All right, we're just running them in, snugging them up with this. I'm just going until I see contact. Going down here to the bottom. Going back up here. I wish I could use my little torque wrench, but I can't. It only goes up to 200 inch pounds. It'd be 216 inch pounds or 18 foot pounds. I gotta get a longer extension. Yeah. Eighteen foot pounds on these. I'm gonna put the belt on, then I'm actually gonna torque them. Pulling air through the shop.
That's it. Now you just take this cool little thing, flip it back down, take your push pins, line your holes back up. You gotta take two hands and do this usually. But put your push pins back in. We're gonna shut our pet cock back off for the coolant drain. And I'm gonna show y'all how to uh, vacuum fill the coolant system. All right, so we got our vacuum filler hooked up here. Um, we got the heater controls on with the ignition on right now in the car. So uh, basically you hook air up to here, it creates a venturi. You're gonna see it pull vacuum down. Should be somewhere in between 20 and 25 pounds. Collapse the radiator hose like that. About 22 pounds. So we're going to hook up our uh, coolant bottle to the end of this so we can disconnect the air now, actually. Sit there and it's holding the vacuum so that you know you don't have any leaks in your coolant system. If you sit here and watch that. Um, Put the other end in your coolant bottle and it's going to fill the system and this is going to keep any voids of air in the system here. So now Lee's going to open our valve up. You're going to see it suck the coolant up. Go ahead, buddy. Whoa. What you don't want to do is let it suck the bottle dry. This bottle doesn't have an indicator on it. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the video on throwing a water pump on this expedition here. This should be about the same procedure for uh 07 through 10 expeditions with the five fours and it should be very similar to all the f-150s with the five four three valves also so it's automated garage signing i like subscribe comment check out all our other ford videos we got seven three videos six oh videos a whole bunch of stuff on all kind of ford stuff so y'all like subscribe comment we'll holler at y'all later